Every day, breweries around Britain send truckloads of yeast to this factory in Burton-upon-Trent. You may think they're preparing for a bread roll baking world record attempt, but the truth is weirder still. In fact, they're going to be turning it into a wholesome breakfast spread. That breakfast spread is yeast extract, the best known variety of which is, of course, Marmite. They've been making the stuff since 1902, and it's now so popular, to produce it they built a vast plant of sprawling pipework and steel tanks. It all starts with huge tanker loads of waste yeast, which are delivered daily from nearly all of the UK's major breweries. To find out what happens to it next, I've come to meet works director Mark Waring. Hello there, Mark. Hi. Robert, how are you? Hi. Very good, thank you. Now, I'm very intrigued to know what's going on in here. What's, what on earth is in these huge tanks we're on top of? Mm, this is the incoming yeast from the brewery. So we take it from the tanker uh, into these uh, vessels, 20 tonnes in a tanker, 60 tonnes in these vessels, right. so three tankers worth into here. So yeah. we're going to have a look at a sample now. Oh, All right. right. OK, this is the one we're going to sample. Right. <laughs> So how do we actually get a sample out of that then? What do we do? Uh, obviously this is quite deep. Uh, yeah. So what we do, we use this long pole here with the All cup right. on the end. So if you'd like to grab hold of that and okay. just drop that in. Right. Don't lose it though, for God's sake. No, I won't. I won't drop it in forever. There we go. Yes. So it's hot in there, isn't it? That's a quite... Yeah, yeah it's just uh, it's, it's, it's suddenly sitting there about 68 degrees at the moment. So what is actually in there, Mark? This is a mixture of yeast, water, beer, and the little bits you floating in there is hop debris. There is some beer in that. There's, there's there quite a bit of beer in there right. at the moment, yes. What they're after is the liquid inside the yeast cells. So the first step is to break down the yeast through a process called autolysis. OK, so what we're doing now is we uh, need to add an enzyme into uh, the copper right. along with some salt. The salt and the enzyme together causes the yeast cell to rupture to release the contents into solution. So to initiate this part of the process, we just press this button here. Press that button there, and that'll start it all going. That'll start it all going. Ooh! Next, the mix is fed through special vibrating sieves, which remove any coarse debris. God, that really smells like beer. Yeah, this is hop debris. So, it's got a so this is just all the hops bit. that were in the, in the mixture you got? Makes beer, yeah. But right now, the liquid is still full of tiny bits of yeast, which are too small to be filtered. So these are removed by a six-stage centrifuge before the resulting liquid is piped into a vast evaporation tower. That's fairly challenging. <laughs> I'm not going to look down. What is, what is this enormous tower for? <clears throat> this big device here is the first-stage evaporator. So this is taking out the water and the alcohol uh, from the material that uh, would come from the separators. So it's now much, much darker. I mean, the initial product we saw was like milky tea. It is. This now is it's now looking like... a bit more like Marmite, it does but, but, like... but it's a little bit more dilute, so right. it's a bit more runny. After filtering through a special press and a second smaller evaporator, it's ready for the final stage, adding the secret ingredients. Yeah, this is it. This is the uh, secret ingredient that goes in at this stage. Um, this is what makes Marmite Marmite, right. of course, uh, which is different to any other product. Right. Put that down there. So that... So this goes into here. So can you tell me what's in it? Uh, well, I would love to tell you what was in there, right. but it, uh, I'm afraid it's yes. top secret. So I, I pour that in there, Yeah, you put that into there. Because every batch of yeast slurry they make Marmite from is slightly different, to ensure every pot tastes the same, they blend different batches together. Oh, look at that, it's beautiful. All that remains now is to take a sample of my new batch of spread to the lab for approval by the highly trained taste buds of St. John Skelton. Hi, St. John. Hi, it's Robert. Hi. Hi, Robert. I've got my sample here, so I want to uh, taste this just to see if it's all right. Is that all right to do that? Now, which one should I have first, then? Should I try my sample? I'm, first? I'll tell you, I'm trying the marmite. You first. try the marmite. You're going to say to yourself, this is what marmite right, tastes like. Right, okay, that's good. Okay. So we'll just give it a, a smear on there. Smells like marmite. Mm -hmm. oh, it tastes, oh. it tastes like oh. Marmite. It, that, that is definitely Marmite in there. But I'm really intrigued to see if this one is the same. If it isn't the same, how many tonnes of that did you make? <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is Marmite. It's... I reckon that's better than that. <laughs> well, it looks right and it tastes right. And luckily for me, I'm one of those people who don't run a mile at the thought of spreading it on my toast. Okay. You happy with that? Yeah, that's a corker. So, with St. John's approval, they finally set about bottling another batch. My only disappointment is that they decided to remove the alcohol from the finished spread. Leave that in, and I reckon they could be onto a winner. 